The best part in taking an unplanned spur of the moment Sunday afternoon drive on a Tuesday is seeing where you end up because some of life's best moments only happen after we stop trying to force our will upon the universe and allow what's meant to unfold. Hey sightseers, sightseeing Sally here and Marty. We're taking another Sunday afternoon drive on a Tuesday, checking out parts of Michigan. Yeah, we're gonna scour the back roads of Michi Michigan. See what we can find here. We're coming up to US Highway 41 that runs up to, I think, Escanaba, right, Marty? Yeah, up towards that area. And beyond, I'll pop up a map just so you can see where US 41 runs here in Upper Michigan. The UP, or the UP, as people call it. The town we're passing right now. I call it a town, it's probably more like a blip on the map called Carbondale, and this is what's here. Really not much. I really don't know much about Carbondale. I'll have to do a little look-see and see if I can come up with any interesting fun facts for ya. Well, it looks like an old abandoned gas station, some underground bunker, and some truck and excavating company. Underground bunker? What do you think that's all about, Marty? Aliens. Up here? Yeah, definitely aliens. You can see it's a gorgeous day out here. Blue skies. Everything is green. We've had a spell of warm weather. As you can see from the thermometer on the car, everything here is just blooming. The lilacs are in full swing. So not quite what it was like about, oh, I don't know, a month ago maybe. They were still experiencing snow up in the UP or in the farther north parts of the UP. Along Lake Superior, they were still getting hammered with snow, I think probably about a month ago. Tons of snow, like ungodly amounts, 20 plus inches. Actually, like three, three feet or more. Yeah, three feet or more. I, I saw some pictures on Facebook. It was pretty unbelievable how much snow they were getting. But you can see that a lot of it has melted, if not all. At least down in these parts, there may still be snow up in the very farther reaches of the UP. I don't know, we're not going that far this, on this little journey today. As you can see, we're coming up on Wallace, the next little place out in the middle of nowhere. Michigan. As you can see, it's part of the Mellon Township. 16 miles north of Menominee, Michigan sits Wallace an old farming settlement located along the Chicago and Northwestern Railway. Reportedly named after a man assigned to the railroad depot by the name of Wallace Sutherland, most of what was originally Wallace got destroyed by a fire that broke out in April of 1931. Looks like there's an abandoned home right over there. And the Wallace Pub where you can hang out with your friends and have some great fun. And a few older buildings over here. That one looks like it may have held horses and maybe a stagecoach at one time. Or was a garage for getting your vehicle fixed here on 41. Otherwise, not a whole lot going on here. However, if you take a little jaunt down this side road, you can see this old building here, right by the railroad. Look at that old fuel tank. You don't see that much anymore. What do you think this was, Marty? Given how close it is to the railroad. Another warehouse or something. It's been added on a few times. You can tell they were using it for the railroad. Yeah, it could have something to do with the lumber industry. Could be. And if you look up on the roof, you can see it has the vents that Marty finds so fascinating. If we just take a little bit closer look here, there's Highway 41. 
and then the houses and stuff that we were looking at for Wallace and then interestingly enough over here you can see this open area which back in the day they often used that to store lumber as well those more open to the air kind of constructed buildings if you will here's another look at that building that we were just looking at you can see it's all made of brick it's got the door open and then from this angle you can see a few more buildings here that one's open to the air lean to is probably a better word for the other one that I was thinking of and then they have a post office and over there is Gary's quality foods and then just up the road are the double R apartments look at that I wonder if that used to be an old hotel at one time and then they got this guy here awaiting to welcome you as you enter into Wallace from the north end of town from the looks of it, he's still celebrating Christmas in June or at the end of May. <laughs> Technically, it's not June yet. And then you got the local ball diamond. Just waiting for a slugger to come along and hit one out of the park. Old Eagle Eye Marty spotted something from the car that I missed and that is a really old 7-Up machine with a snake sticking out of it. Okay, no joke, there was a snake head sticking out of the machine and as soon as I walked towards it, it just <laughs> went inside. I'm a little... <laughs> Sorry, just... I was... Yeah. I think I'm just going to step away from the machine and leave that little critter <laughs> to its own devices. Well, thanks a lot, Marty. Did you know that there was a snake sticking out of that machine? <laughs> Was it really? Yes, no fooling, and it was alive. Really? Yes. Is it still there? It poked his head down below. It, it, it was definitely alive because as soon as I walked closer, it poked its head down, and I could have sworn no, it was a setup. I thought it was, I thought it was fake. I don't know, it's just a neat old machine and I see an extension cord there, it's like it must still work that they're using it. Yeah, well, I don't know if it's holding uh, snakes. Uh, if snakes are making it its home inside the machine, I don't know how, well, how much they're using it. Sorry, I'm just a little shook up by that. I wasn't expecting a snake. You'll notice there is quite a bit of traffic, especially going south here on 41. That's because we're just finishing up the holiday weekend. Probably a couple holiday stragglers. Yep, heading home. The next little township that we're coming up on is called Ingalls. Just like Laura Ingalls. Yeah, but I don't know if it's any actual relation to Laura Ingalls. Although their family was over in Wisconsin for a while. Sure, the barn's right there. <laughs> Maybe that's where Nellie lived. You can see that there is a neat old rusty dump truck there and a skull hanging right there. And I spot something else that's from a blast from the past. 80s. 80s. I Rock Z. How many of you remember those cars? I do. Yeah, my dad had a Camaro for a while. Believe me, I thought it was hot bleep when I drove that car around town. I'm gonna do a quick pan just so you can see how big Ingalls really is. As you can see, there's a few houses here dotted along 41. A post office, just like Wallace, 
and then another building over here which based on the shape of it kind of reminds me of an old schoolhouse or maybe even their town hall at one time and then this house here on the corner the barn that we just got done showing you and Spouty's auto body over there. Named after the Honorable Eliezer S. Ingalls, a judge who helped organize Menominee County, this community's history dates back to 1858 when the first settler, Thomas Caldwell, began clearing the land. Like Wallace, Ingalls was mainly a farming community, though it also became home to a mill and lumber operation. And if you look closely over there by the tree, you can see there's a Bigfoot watching me. Did you know we're in Bigfoot country, Marty? Yep. You wouldn't know it from the busy highway, what a beautiful area this would be to live in. You've got what I believe is the Menominee River that runs along here. You imagine this being in your backyard? I still can't get over that snake in the soda machine or pop machine as they would call it up here. I wonder, it looked awfully a lot alike the one I seen getting killed on the road the other day. Do you think maybe that snake knew that I watched its roller get killed on the road, Marty? No idea. Well, We've landed up in a small town called Stevenson, all because we were hungry and wanted to eat our picnic lunch. And I needed to use the bathroom. So we thought stopping here at the park would be the perfect place to have our picnic lunch, which we're all done with. And seeing as Stevenson looks like there might be some cool things to check out, we're gonna go wander around Stevenson's downtown, so to speak, and see what's here. Incorporated in 1898, Stevenson is named after one of the early lumbermen who logged in the area. With a population of only 813, Stevenson is one of the smallest cities in Michigan. But before we go any further, I have a quick shout out to give. Special thanks goes out to Lamar for becoming our latest patron here on Patreon. Yay! Thanks Lamar for helping us get out to these fabulous places across America. Now, back to Stevenson. By the way, this is something you don't see very often anymore. An old wrought iron train bridge. I guess I was wrong. It's not wrought iron. I already said it's just some old iron or steel bridge. But still, it was cool to see because it's not something you see every day. Speaking of things you don't see every day, an old buckboard wagon with milk jugs. This is a pretty interesting looking downtown here in Stevenson, something I didn't know existed. This building here, you can tell, used to be most likely an old bank. You got the pillars here, and then that purple box up there is where the alarm would have been. At least, according to this expert here, Marty. I've cracked into a few banks in my day, did my time. What? <laughs> How come this is the first I've been hearing of that? <laughs> Nowadays, this building is a winery as evidenced by the letters taped to the building. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to pretend like I didn't hear what Marty just said before, so we're going to move along. On the corner, you've got Gary's Quality Foods. Wasn't that the same name of the store down in Wallace? I wonder if it's the same Gary running the two stores. If you know, let us know in the comments section below. And then I know Marty spotted something over here. He's pointing out on the sign here at the recipe box. How many people know what that is? 
kind of funny because you don't see that in Wisconsin until right when you cross the border into Michigan you start seeing that. And no, it has nothing to do with ladies. You know, the ladies that entertain men on a dance stage. It has nothing to do with that. For those who don't know, pasties are a type of pastry filled with meat, vegetables, or even cheese. Originally developed as a meal for the English tin miners in Cornwall, pasties have become culturally synonymous here in the U.S. with Upper Michigan. You can see Marty's checking out the Township Hall. From the looks of it, it was probably built about the late 1800s. I wonder how many people know what that is. I'm guessing anybody younger than the age of 40 years doesn't know what that is but I could be wrong. That is a coal chute, by the way, for those of you who don't know. I know what it is because actually when I was younger, we lived in a house that had a coal chute and it was a great way to get into the house when you locked yourself out. And then we can see that they have a library next door to the township's hall. And then if we go farther down, there's a nice little resting area next door to the library. And a cool old car sitting in somebody's backyard. Of course, Marty's way ahead of me again. I gotta hurry up and catch up to him. According to historical accounts, the first man to settle here was James Valentine in 1870. Soon after, the rail line appeared. Since Stevenson is located nearly halfway between Menominee and Escanaba, the town quickly became an important stop for watering steam engines along the way. What you looking at now, Marty? Funny thing is, this theater here, Years ago when I was in my late 20s, early 30s, I bought all the projectors and stuff out of this theater. Or at least that's what I was told, but a lot of the paperwork I had had this theater's name on it in Stevenson, Michigan. So I believe that's where the equipment came from. I don't know if it's reopened or what they've done with it, but here it is. Well, from the looks of it, you could get yourself an ice cream cone, Marty, if you really wanted. I don't know anybody around here that doesn't like ice cream. Hint, hint. Either Marty's going to get his wallet or he's ignoring my hint. Girl can try. Moving along, because I have a feeling that Marty's not cracking open the wallet today. Next door to the theater is the Wild Eagle Bar and Grill. Since we already ate lunch, I guess we won't be going in there either. So we'll just keep walking around and seeing what else is here in Stevenson. Yeah, I don't see the bulge of his wallet in his back pocket, so I can pretty much guess that we're not getting ice cream today. Wah, wah, wah. Meet. Yeah, the dog house. That's where you're gonna be for not buying me ice cream. Only kidding. Marty's never in the dog house. I know some of the ladies out there are like, don't be mean to Marty. We just have this understanding of jokes and whatnot. See anything interesting, Marty? It's a barber shop. Oh, it looks like you could get a haircut, huh? I shaved my own head. Well, for those of you who don't shave your own head, John's Barbershop Hours, he's closed on Mondays. But he is open on Tuesday through Friday, 12 to 5. Saturdays, 9 to noon. And then over here we've got the Stevenson Family Restaurant with the old Coca-Cola sign hanging. It's pretty cool. This is something I've never seen before. They've got a little sign here and a doorbell, uh, you know. So if you need help, you can just ring the doorbell so that you can serve on their outdoor patio. And it said on the sign that if you wanted to hang out on the patio, that was fine with the idea that patrons 
come first, but still, that's pretty nifty. You know, they always talk about Midwestern nice, but that's taken it to a whole new level. Speaking of Midwestern nice, I really think this town is really super nice. It just kind of reminds me of the type of town you'd see in Andy Griffith or Mayberry. Don't you think, Marty? Don't you get that kind of small town vibe? Yep. Absolutely. All you need is Floyd the Barber. Well, you got John the Barber, but John's not in today, so. I'll give haircuts and just shave your head like I do mine. Marty Skinners. <laughs> Marty Skinners. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, but this town does give me Andy Griffith vibes. Totally. Donuts. Too bad they're closed. I think my favorite is ice cream. Marty's is probably <laughs> donuts. And then you got what was Faye's Styles and Smiles Family Hair Salon and the Stevenson Bakery, which doesn't appear to be in business anymore. And then another building over here that the sign no longer exists. And then on the corner is this really cool looking house. I like how it has the front stoop and then the brick facing on the front. And then up here with the little balcony overlooking the town and then there's this interesting looking building right next to the railroad tracks what do you think this used to be marty i have no idea maybe a service station or something i don't i'm lost other than the poles mounted out front something from the looks of it whatever it was you used to be able to get ice cream here I think it would make a really cool museum or maybe a little cafe. If it was a cafe, I'd call it the gingerbread house because that's what it actually reminds me of is a gingerbread house or the old gingerbread house from that fairy tale, you know, Hansel and Gretel. Without really knowing the town's history, if I had to guess based on everything I've learned from all the other northern Midwestern towns we visited, that this town probably sprung up when the railroad arrived, that there was logging that happened. If I'm not mistaken, there's probably still some logging still going on around here and possibly some mining. Originally dominated by the lumber industry, over time, Stevenson transformed into an agricultural community, as evidenced by the feed mill still in operation today. Mining in Stevenson, however, is fairly new, and a current subject of controversy between the mining company in Stevenson and the Menominee Nation based in Kashina, Wisconsin. The tribe is fighting to have some of the proposed mining land to be federally protected as a designated National Historic Site. For those who don't know, Upper Michigan has had a number of different minerals mined from it, mostly iron and copper ore, but I thought, if I'm not mistaken, that we passed a sign that said something about a mine. So if I had to guess, there's been mining that's been going on around here, along with the other things I mentioned. I would definitely categorize Stevenson as being a hidden little gem up here in the UP. You know, if you're looking for that town with the Mayberry feel to it, that Mayberry vibe, this is definitely the place to come. Well, my chariot awaits. What do you think, Marty? Should we move on and see if we can find anything else? Sure. How thrilled does he look? <laughs> Maybe he'd be more excited if there was donuts in the equation. Let's find some donuts. I'm saying ice cream, but he wants donuts, so I guess we're going to go see if we can find some donuts. Well, it looks like we found something better than donuts. There it is. At least in Marty's mind. Marty's next plaything, his next toy. Who wants to bet that the fire station is like right around the corner?
Five dollars? Ten? And as Marty goes around the corner, you can see the sign, or the siren, not the sign, but you can see the Stevenson Municipal Building sign. So yeah, I'm guessing that, oh yeah, there it is. Fire department, right there. Though we never did get donuts or ice cream, we called our little impromptu road trip complete, having let our day unfold according to whatever came our way. In the process, we discovered a few forgotten towns on Highway 41, walked around Upper Michigan's version of Mayberry, and laughed ourselves silly over a snake inside a soda machine. <laughs>